Hey guys, welcome back to the next part of our series. Today we're going to start with the last module, module 6, and we're going to be talking about Mesh. So what is Mesh? Mesh is a motion graphics um, setup or, or plugin that we have here inside of Maya that will allow us to create some very nice uh, animations in a fast way. Animation is not only about character animation and rigs and uh, combat and stuff like that. There's also a lot of work out there that involves uh, motion graphics, like a logo animation, an intro, an outro, things like that. And uh, whenever we want to animate like a lot of things going on at the same time, um, instances are going to be the best way to do it. An instance is pretty much a duplicate of an object that shares the same like a uh, transformation node. It's, ju it just, it's just in a different place, but it shares most of the things from the object. So instances are ways in which we can duplicate objects without, um, without occupying as much memory as we would do if we were animating like individual, um, uh, duplicates of an object. Okay. So think of instances like clones of an object that are going to be easier to animate for Maya. Now, we're going to be doing three small exercises here inside of Mesh, and I'm going to show you just like how very how, how easy it is to create some very nice stuff. So in this first one, I want to create just a random like shape element that's just going to like grow, move the shapes around and create something very interesting. So I'm going to start with a cube. The cube is going to be my basic shape, and it doesn't have to be a cube. It can be pretty much anything. Actually, let's make it a little bit more interesting. Let's grab all of the edges here. I'm going to bevel them so we have a little bit of a, of a different shape here. And now let's grab just like one face. I'm going to control E to extrude it and then control E to extrude it in. So we have this like little hole in there and that little hole. I'm also going to bevel. So just grab the edge there, those four edges there and let's bevel. Uh, that last bevel, let's make the fraction a little bit less intense. So fraction, smaller fraction. There we go. So we just do the history, first transformation, center pivot, and this shape is going to be called, let's call this our origin cube. Okay. So our origin cube, we're going to use this using the mesh plugin, which by the way, we need to activate up here in windows, settings and preferences, plugin manager, you just type in mesh and load it. And, uh, and we're going to use this cube to create a mesh network. Now, the cool thing about mesh is that by creating a mesh network, by clicking this button right here, we're going to get this. And if you click the second button right here, we're going to open the mesh editor, whereas, and here's where we're going to see what's going on. So right now we just created one thing called a mesh one distribute. You can see that our original cube is now hidden and everything is happening here under repro mesh. So this cubes that you're seeing here, they're instances of that original cube that we created. So I'm going to click here, mesh distribute. And on the left side or right side, we're going to see all of the things that we can add, all of these nodes we can add to our mesh network. And if we go into the mesh one distribute, we can actually change what's happening here. So right now, as you can see, we have 10 points. So the object in this case, the original cube is being duplicated 10 times. And each object is being moved 20 units away from the previous one. So no, sorry, in, in 20, in a distance of 20 units, we are, we have all of this. So if we were to decrease this distance to like 10 or something, all of the cubes will be really, really close. And if we increase the distance, of course, the cubes are going to be far away. So I'm going to keep the cubes like close together like this. And uh, now I can show you uh, another one of this guys. So I'm going to go here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, <coughs> oh, sorry. <coughs> Actually, no, let's go back here and let's talk a little bit about this guy right here. So right now we have this distribution, which is a linear distribution. And again, the cool thing about this is that we can actually animate anything in here. Every single object you see in here, every single slider can be animated. So if we go to frame one, for instance, and we go all the way down to one object, we can click set key and then say, hey, by frame, let's say 60, I want there to be like 10 copies. So now we're just going to set key. And if we check the animation, we got this. Dun, 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 dun. And just by default, you're going to start moving in and out. So very, very cool, right? So something uh, it's just like a, a very nice uh, transformation. So imagine we want to do like this sort of uh, appearance of things and uh, or like a logo that starts getting like extra little things on top of it. Well, this is a very quick way to do it. Because instead of having to animate and move the visibility of 10 objects, we can do everything with the mesh distribute here. So I'm going to right click and break the connection. And now I'm going to go into the distribution type because there are some very cool things that we can do here. We have radial distribution. So our cube is going to be like positioned in this sort of uh, fashion. The more cubes we add, of course, the longer this ring is going to be. And again, we can animate this. Imagine animating an, an animation where all of these things go in and out. Very cool, right? So we also have uh, spherical 
where, as you can see here, we're filling in a sphere, like an invisible sphere. We can change the radius of the sphere. And here's where things come into play, because as you can see, we could start with, let's say, one point, go to frame one, say, set key here. And I know that I want to finish with, let's say, 100 points and a big radius. So this is going to be my final animation here. So I'm just going to uh, set key. I'm going to go to radius set key on the radius and on the first one i want the radius to be one so now if we take a look at this we're going to get this so it's kind of like an emitter emitting all of these geometries and see how fast maya reacts to the whole thing it's very very easy to animate using a mash because as you can see it, it just affects everything it's just an instance and, and instances are really really light for the for the computer so yeah there we go we have a very nice like easy animation there we also have a mesh position, and this is the one that we're going to be using. So let me break the connections here, and let's create a very quick, like, N. So I'm going to go here to the text tool. It's just going to click it, and on the text, I'm just going to write a letter N, as in next toot. Just write the letter N. There we go. I probably want to make it a little bit, like a little bit here on the, on the extrusion, a little bit like square, like this. There we go. I am going to delete the history on this thing, and I'm going to call this ngeo. Now, if we go to our repro mesh and we go into the repro options here, or sorry, the mesh distribute, this one right here, we can select this and change this to mesh. And down here on the input mesh, we can middle mouse drag and drop this ngeo right here. And now what's going to happen is that my little cube is going to be going or is going to be appearing everywhere on that end. So we can just increase this n, like let's say a thousand. We can go a thousand. That's that's completely fine. Instances again are are super super uh, practical because we can do this sort of thing. Look at that. So now we got this uh, element, and we can also start with very few and then just start populating everything. So let's say we we want to start here, set key, and then by frame eighty, we want a thousand of these guys to be on our mesh like this. Very cool, right? So if we play the animation, this is what we got an animation or this thing getting like completely uh, filled with this uh, little elements. And the cool thing is you don't even need the mesh. I can press H to hide the mesh and the repro mesh already knows that it just needs to follow that shape to create this very cool effect. Look at that. Amazing, right? So let's go back to the mesh distribute here. Let's go to our, our keyframe. Now, as you can see, one of the, the bad things about this is, is we can't actually see where the keyframe is. Um, even if we like select the thing, like it, it's just not there. So the way we can see it, of course, is if we go into the graph editor. If you go into the graph editor, you're going to see here the mesh distribute. You're going to be able to see the points. For instance, let's get rid of that point. And right now it has this like soft distribution. Let's say we want to accelerate this thing. Like we want everything to, to appear really quickly and then just fade off. And if we go to the last frame where the animation is, we can say, hey, maybe I want 1,200 rather than, than 1,000. So now there's going to be even more cubes and we're going to get this. So very quickly we fill the little end and it just like keep on going. Now, what else can we do here? Well, since this is, again, a, a, a node editor, like a, like a mesh network, we can add more stuff to the network. Let's select the repro mesh. I'm going to go to the mesh options here, and you can see we can select or add all of these elements. Now, some of them don't play together with others. It's sort of like a um, like some of them work better with certain things and others work better with other things. Uh, there's this one, for instance, the random one. I really like the random one. So I'm just going to click here and I'm going to say add random node. And now, as you can see, all of the objects have a random position in X, Y, and Z of a unit. One unit, random position, which is fine. But right now I don't want that. I want to have a, like a random rotation all the way around. And I probably just want random rotations on Y and random rotations on Z or on, on X probably. Yeah, X and Y. Let's just do X and Y. So I'm going to go to frame one. I'm going to hit S. You can see everything gets animated. And I'm going to go here to frame 120. Let's grab rotation X and I'm just going to push them to this side and rotation Y and push them to this side. So now what's going to happen is the letter N is going to get all of these elements and we're going to get all of these options here. Like the things are just going to start rotating around and creating these very interesting effects. So imagine if we were doing like a robot or like a very like sci-fi looking thing, like all of these things, even though there's overlaps and stuff, they just look cool. They're going to give us this very, very interesting things. And that's not all. Let's add one more note here. So right now we're, we're using uh, two notes. Uh, I'm not sure why it's not here. Let me... 
Let me refresh that because we should be able to see, there we go, the mash random and the mash distribute. At any point, if you're working on something and you're like, you know what, I don't wanna see the randoms right now, you can just turn this off. You can just turn it off and everything else is gonna, is gonna work. This is very, very modular, very um, graph or node-like, so you're gonna be able to turn on and off all of these things. So there's one more node that's very cool, which is the influence node. And the influence node is very cool because as you can see here, there's this like locator that's gonna tell us how much influence we have on each specific area. And this locator we can animate. So let's go to the mesh influence here. And the influence power is how much power there's gonna be. I'm gonna leave it to one. And the radius, I'm gonna keep it, keep it small like this. So now what I can do, if I were to do like a logo or something, I could animate this guy coming here and then through time, it just goes and does this thing. Now let's finish all the way over here so that there's no more influence. So now if we take a look, we're gonna have this. Very cool, right? Now we could even, we could make that slower, of course, or if we want to, we can just like leave it like this or maybe come back and forth. And you can see that while this thing is going through the, through the motions, right now we're not seeing any random thing, which we should, do we? Did I erase the animation? Oh, it seems like I, no, no, the animation is there. Uh, order of operation is also important. So I'm gonna bring this down here so that the random is all the way to the top. So that's the last thing that the thing is gonna like analyze. That way we see the influence first and then we see the animation later. That way you can see that things are animating and we create this very, very cool looking effect. Like just look at this thing. Pretty cool, right? And again, this is possible because we're using the mesh network. If we were to use other options, like imagine trying to, to animate or hand animate each one of these specific points and, and rotate them and, and all of that stuff, it would be a nightmare, right? So you always need to look for the tool that's better suited for the job you're being asked, right? So in this case, mesh for motion graphics, perfect option. Now I'm gonna go to the influence here and I'll probably increase the radius quite a bit because I wanna, I want to really see everything from the from the get go. So there we go. Perfect, right? One more note. I'm gonna add one more note here, guys, and it's this one's a very cool note. Uh, what I'm gonna say now is I want to add a color note so that every single little piece on the on the mesh network has a very nice color. So I'm gonna go here into the mesh network and I'm gonna add a color note very nicely here on the top, and uh, I'm just gonna say I want this like green color. Let's go number six, and I'm gonna random hue the color. Uh, why can't we see the color though? Huh, that's weird. Normally we would see the color, but it seems like it's not here. That's fine. Now, there's a couple of things that we need to do if we want to uh, bring the color into the, into the actual object. So we're gonna go to the repro mesh right here and down into the, let me check my notes right here very quickly. Down here on the render node, on the render stats, I believe. No, where is it? Whoop. Do, 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 do. We need to turn on something called color per vertex. Export vertex colors, there we go, that one right there. And uh, now we're gonna assign a new material here we're gonna assign the Arnold AI standard surface. And on the color, we're gonna insert not a file like what we normally do with the image. We're actually gonna insert a, an element that's called AI user data. It's gonna be down here on the Arnold. So it's AR user data color. There we go. And the attribute, we're gonna name uh, the name of the, of the color that we have back here on the repro mesh. Uh, there's here, here, my output attributes, color per vertex, that's fine. And uh, usually this thing is called, where is it? I always, I always misplaced this guy right here. Here, the mesh color, color set, this one, it's called color set. So we're just gonna copy that, the color set name. Let's go back to our hyper shade. And on the new material that we just created, this guy, on the user data right here, we're just gonna call this uh, color set. Now let's add a light real quick, this item light. Let me save this as mesh logo. And on the light, let's add the, uh, 
like just a 2D texture, which is this file node. And on the file node, we're going to connect the power plant. There we go. Perfect. Uh, so now let's let's test this. Let's render. Let's see if this works. Just give it one second for this thing to process. It's importing all the meshes and in this case, the, the color texture. And what we're pretty much telling this guy, there we go. Look at that beautiful thing. What we're telling this guy is, hey, you're you're going to give each one of these elements one color. And we selected this color back here. So I'm just going to review this real quick. So here on the, on the mesh color, we selected this green color. And by changing the random hue, we can change the random hue, the random saturation, random value. We're going to get like all of these different types of green, which is very cool, looks very cool. And um, and this name, this color set, this is the name of the object. Now, I would suggest having a normal name. So I would call this next to color set and then just make sure to copy this. And the main trick here is instead of using a texture, we're going to use this thing called AI user data color. And we're going to just place the name there and that should work. And one final thing, remember here on the color section or sorry, on the repro mesh, if you select the repro mesh, it's very important that you export uh, the vertex colors here and also here on the mesh one repro down here on the output attributes, make sure color per vertex is turned on. And that way we're going to see uh, the proper colors. Now, again, the cool thing about that is we can animate everything. We can animate anything that you think of. So I'm going to start with like, let's say with a green color set key, and then we're going to end also with a green color set key. Oops set key and then at the middle of our animation let's go for like a like a bluish color and we're gonna set key so now we go to the middle of the animation here frame 60 and we render we're gonna see this blue colors and as we approach the end of the animation the colors are gonna start changing back to green very cool right so this is the magic of MASH, guys. MASH is really, really cool. It's a very powerful software. Uh, I invite you to, to try and, and explore all the different notes. We're going to have two more small videos where I'm going to show you a couple of notes that are also very, very cool. And, uh, and yeah, so hang on tight, and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.